And the first color we're going to use is a blue. So whatever color you have, I mean, whatever color of blue you have, if you can see that one of them is lighter than the other, I want you to use that one. But what it takes is to rub that dry color with that brush. And I don't know if you can see it, but I am pushing down on my bristles and moistening that paint. So that right there is how the watercolor pigment comes to the top. When you moisten that paint, that color comes to the top. And then you wanna take the brush, I've got a lot of color on this brush and I'm gonna put it over here on what I call my palette tray. And you wanna really let that water flow also. So I am bending that bristle so that the water is also flowing. And if you have a brand new brush, that water flows real fast. If your brush has been used and is stained, it probably runs slower. So I'm gonna assume a lot of you have new brushes and we're gonna have real wet paintings today and that's okay. I'm gonna get you to really pay attention to what you have. So I have put a lot of color over here on this tray but I also have a lot of color on the color itself. So now then I'm going to, I'm not so much cleaning my brush as I am drying it off. I don't want it that wet because when I come over here onto my watercolor paper, I don't want standing water. And so I don't want my brush to be too wet. So now I'm gonna come back into this color you may have a lot of color over here on your tray and you can come over here instead. So it doesn't matter whether you pick your color up here or here, this is gonna be more color than this. So now then our drawing over here, I'm gonna put my brush down and I'm gonna open that brush up. I'm gonna put that brush down, I'm gonna open that brush up. And you all can see that I did not color in those that little spot but I put the brush in and I picked it up and that created a brush stroke. Now this is the most basic painting you can learn to do from me and it teaches so much. We did the same process with the owl uh, which is the first one in the series that I teach. So now this one goes back to the real basics and that's what you're gonna do. And you're gonna do that over and over again and you don't want it too dry and you don't want it too wet. And um, so you can see the process is, is load the brush, put the brush down in the spot and pick it up put the brush down in the spot and pick it up. Now these blue bonnets are prettiest if you're not putting them all straight like these two are. If they're a little bit of an angle, then that is the most fun with the blue bonnets. So I'm just gonna keep loading my brush when I need it and then putting the color down and picking it up. So that is the process and that's what we're going to do until we get down to the leaves. And so that everybody doesn't paint their leaves green, we're going to clean our brush and we're going to paint these leaves right here below the, the painting. So I'm going to clean my brush. Now y'all might look up and see how I, I clean my brush because I can't leave my paint on the brush while, while, and wet while I'm waiting for you all. So I'm cleaning the brush, I wipe the color off, and then I squeeze my brush and it drips clean water. And then I might wipe it again just to make sure. Now the brush, you may be able to see a little blue in it, but it's most likely clean with just one dripping the water through it. So I'm gonna wait for everybody to get that stage and then we'll do the leaves.
and and if I do start moving too fast for anybody, I really want you all to tell me um, because I can slow down. My classes during the week are always two hours long, and so that's not a bit unusual um, to go that long when I'm giving a lot of instruction. So, Elizabeth, will you let me know when you're finished with that stage? You Are you finished? Okay, so I think we're gonna go on now. Um, and um, anybody that's not can watch this again, unless you already know, um, you know, what I'm, what I'm teaching. If you've got any questions, go ahead and stop me and ask me. So now then I'm gonna come down here to my green and I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm rubbing the brush against that dry color until it's moistened, then I'm gonna come over here onto the palette tray and put my color down. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna paint my leaves. Now, the, most of the leaves are about the same size as the, as the uh, flower petals, but some of them are a little bit longer. And so you just put the brush down and pull it for a little bit and then pick it up. And that is just a little bit longer brush stroke, but it's still just a brush stroke. So that's what that will look like. And then I'm going to need to clean my brush again so that I don't have a color drying on my brush. So I do miss your all's voices. If anybody's thinking about a question they'd like to ask. So far, so good. Okay, good, thank you. And when we are finished with this painting all together and I am getting ready to leave, anybody that's interested in learning a little bit more about my studio classes, because you would like to take enroll, to actually enroll in the studio classes eventually, um, please stay with me and let me give you some details about that. And I will tell you that I have a real special deal for the month of March, if anybody can jo join me during that time. So um, I'm just asking you to stay after class so that I'm not, um, and Karen, you already know the details of that. And, um, um, you know, if you already know the details, there's no need for you to, to stick around. But if I haven't talked to you individually about it, I'd really like it if you would. So now then we're gonna go and we're gonna do the same green with these leaves that are right here in the middle. And what I'm doing is I am working from my painting top to bottom and left to right. And the reason is, is that you want to always work to keep this part of your hand out of your painting. It's the, it's the culprit of so many smears and um, um, problems, you know, that we can take care of to some degree, but they're hard, you know, pretty hard to take care of when you get, put your hand down on this side of your paper and it's got paint on it. So now then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put that brush down and I'm gonna pull it out. I'm not coloring in, I am making a brush stroke. 
and just like I've told you all, I mean, maybe you haven't heard me talk about this, but if I showed you what's not right, everybody would come back and tell me that that's the way I showed them to, to paint the breaststroke. And so I don't take that chance. Now then, these are still wet. These uh, leaves are dry. I'm going to come in here where it's dry and I'm going to pick up paint again. And with the point of my brush, in other words, I'm not going to push it down. I am going to do a stem and it needs, it can be a broken, broken lines. You know, the more, the more you try to make it a straight line, the less attractive it is. But those are broken lines and the eye reads it like it's a solid line. So then this is dry enough and I just did the same thing. Just two little lines to make the stem. And we'll do some stem on the inside of the blue bonnet, but this is not the time to do it now. So now then I'm going to clean my brush because I don't want that color to dry on there. And I am going to squeeze my brush a little bit on my palette just to have a little more water, you know, clean it. And, um, and I keep a bottle of water in my studio right by my palette that looks like this. And some of them are smaller and some of them are larger. Now we could go back into this blue to do the rest of them, but I wanna show you all again how to load the brush. I wanna show you that over and over again and how to put it on your tray and how to make sure your brush is not too wet. Now, and this time I'm gonna show you about having a, um, um, an extra piece of watercolor paper that you can um, just put your brush down to make sure it's not too wet. So that's all this is, is just a water brush, I mean, a piece of watercolor paper that I have used for that purpose. And I'm just going to kind of put it right there and use it that way. So now then again, I'm going to rub the blue and it's already been moistened once. So the paint's going to come up to the top really fast. And I'm just going to keep rubbing until I've got quite a bit of paint. Now this particular color is called manganese blue hue and it is slow to rise to the top. Now I'm going to have a little bit more color than I had before. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to test my brush stroke. And it's okay. It's a little bit drier than I want. So I'm going to kind of make this a little wetter and lots of paint. I'm going to dry my brush off because now it's too wet. Now that I'm going to come over here into my breath, into my blue, I've picked up color and I'm ready to paint again. And I'm just going to put that color down and pick my brush up. And you'll hear me say that over and over and over again. And that is what a brush stroke is. And a lot of teachers go into a lot of detail about how to hold your brush. I don't go into that because how you pick up that brush and use it is very individual to you. I can tell you what your brush stroke is supposed to look like and you will learn how to hold the brush what's right with you for you and make those brush strokes. Now it takes time to learn. So now then I have uh, I need to also tell you all that I have a, a slight tremor. And some days that tremor is worse than others. And so I'm a ha in the habit, I don't know if you can see me doing this, but I'm in the habit of using my left hand like it's a holder and I will hold my hand against it. Now that's one way I do it. Another way I do it is to hold my wrist. And with these little pieces of paper, you kind of have to hold your paper sometimes and your wrist. So if you have a problem like that, there are ways to solve it and still 
thoroughly enjoy doing very pretty paintings. So, um, and I know that for a fact because I'm still painting pretty paintings. So now then I've done all of those and y'all can see that there's a lot of space in there that we did not color in because I'm using a paintbrush, I'm not using a crayon. So what we want is a brush stroke there instead of filled in color. If it was a coloring book and crayons, we'd be filling in the color, but we're not. And we're not painting it like it's a wall either. We're not going up and down. We might pick the brush up and go down again with it, but we don't go up and down with our brush. I mean, that's treating a brush like it was a mop. And all it does is put color down, pick it up, put color down and more water all along. And the other thing I tell my students is don't go messing in your paint in what you've done. This is not the time to go back and fill in more. So, I mean, on occasion when I'm painting it, I'll go in once and then go do another stripe if it's, if it's bigger than my brush stroke allowed, but not after I've done it and I'm, it's not time to go back in because all you're gonna do is keep your painting wet and we want this painting to dry as we're painting. So now then we're gonna do these green leaves and these green leaves and we're gonna, I'm just gonna keep on. It's easy to catch up on this painting if, if I'm getting ahead of you. Um, because all we've used is one blue and one green. So now then put that brush down and pick it up. And what we're, it's a little bit of a pull it to make it some of those leaves that are a little bit longer. And we'll come back and we'll connect these leaves with a stem in just a minute. And don't forget that you can, this is a small piece of paper and you can turn it around. You just want to make sure that you don't get it into the wet paint. And now I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to make sure I have a good point on my brush, which I can do that on my palette. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do some broken lines to create a stem. So it's um, uh, just you know, just put that brush down and do a little stem and then pick the brush up. And that's all there is to it. And now I'm gonna clean my brush of the green and we are finished using that green for a little bit. So, And when I know that um, a few of you are finished, I mean, it'd be good to know if everybody's finished, but I can't possibly know. Um, I'm going to stop share and ask you all to show me your paintings, if you're painting with me or if you're willing to show me. Nobody has to do anything. Uh, when I ask you to, it's just for me to be a good teacher, it's really, really good feedback. Oh, good job, good job. And it'll be better if you'll share, oh, great job, yeah. Um, the, um, but I am gonna unshare so that we can actually pick the painting up and I can look at everybody's for just a minute. Um, and um, 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 so I would love to send anybody that does not have a way to print the patterns, the patterns. So the next stage that we're going to do, we're going to be using the tip of our brush this time. And I'm going to use this darker blue. And if you have a darker blue, I recommend that you use it. Now, my darker blue doesn't take very much at all to have a lot of color. So I've got lots of color right here already. I'm going to dry my brush. I'm going to come over here. And I really didn't fill the whole brush 
with color on this. And I'm going to change this view so you all can really see what I'm doing here. And I'll wait. That's I think that's. Um, so I want everybody looking at the screen, if you can. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little brushstroke here and a little brushstroke here. It's kind of like parentheses. So the little petal is the sentence or the words that we're putting it around. And then this is a parenthesis. So I'm going to come back over here and get the color. I'm going to again do the parentheses. Now, it doesn't have to touch the blue. In fact, if you'll let it bring in some white space, it is very, very pretty in the, you know, when it dries and we finish this painting, that's what's going to be the thing that kind of ties everything together is all of that white space. And you can, I'm not turning my painting like I should, because uh, that's the important thing is, is that you, your wrist is comfortable doing this brushstroke and we're using a small piece of paper so you can turn that paper and um, not, um, you know, have it be uncomfortable or anything. Uh, and if you're using a larger piece of paper, um, I recommend that you that you cut it and make it smaller. And six by eight, six inches by eight inches is the size of paper that I provide for my students to paint with. So if you cut your paper down to six by eight, <clears throat> the patterns will always fit. And I'm just going to keep going because all of this paint is dry. And I'm just going to keep doing my parentheses around my little petal. And every once in a while, I go back and get more color and I try to make sure that I have a point on my brush and I try to not push down too hard when I'm doing my my parentheses because we don't want our parentheses as fat as we do our petals. You can see how quiet I can get at times. I better talk so that y'all know I'm still here. Y'all were so patient when it when the um, video froze and we couldn't get with each other. Kathleen, you know we can entertain ourselves. <laughs> noticed that before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um. So um, we are actually almost finished painting this painting. And um, we've just got a little tiny bit more to do. And I'm going to go ahead and clean my palette. You know, I'm a, a stickler for a clean palette. And the reason is, is because if I wasn't, I'd be always putting my brush in the wrong color. And I want my students to develop good habits. And um, so I think it really, really matters. If you have a dirty palette, you know, it's fine. If I'm painting someplace on location and all of a sudden I get interrupted, I end up with a dirty palette too. You all, I have a couple of yellow finch um, outside my window eating my bird seed. This is the first time they've noticed them. 
So I'm pretty excited. You know, nature or, you know, whatever somebody's painting. And we don't want to overdo how many red dots we have. We just want a few or what's good to the eye. And so um, be careful that you don't overdo it. And I'm going to take this quinacridone. Uh, no, I'm sorry, this one is permanent red, Daniel Smith, permanent red. And I am going to um, pick up that red color. And it's mainly right there on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to put these dots in here in a few places that um, is on the inside of the of the painting. So I'm going to put them up there. I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to come down here. So that's one, two, three, four, five that I have on that one. And I think that's plenty. And I'm going to come over here and find some real good places to put them here. So they're just kind of in between the, um, and this blue bonnet is a little bit larger. And maybe actually it's made up of two different ones. You know, when you're looking at them down on the ground, um, they look like individual ones and then you get down there and look at it and there's three or four right there where you're looking and this one I put more so I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten in that one and so I did I treated it like it was two different blue bonnets and I bet I can even um, make that look more so that way by doing the black lines now I'm cleaning my brush because I don't want that color to dry on my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and clean my palette right now. So Emily, I gave you a brush. And by the way, that is a brand new brush. And so it may be dripping more than um, you want it to. It may be working out, being wet, wetter than you want it, want it to. Um, I'm so new at it that I don't know the difference. So it works out well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it will slow down as, um, um, as it, and you do just use tap water in your brushes, you all, and you leave the water in your brush. Um, if you don't, your bristles will will actually dry out and splay. They won't keep this this uh, point, and it's not easy to get that point back if if your brush ever dries out. And I even always put my cap back on my brush, and I store it bristle down. Now you know I I have quite a few brushes that I go through in the course of time of, of painting, and um, you know, they're marked for different reasons, like this one is the small or, uh, you know, whatever is the reason that I mark them. But these ones that are standing are the ones that I need to fill. And so I've got all these systems that I use, but they I store them with the bristle side down. And that way that bristle will fill up with water and that's as far as it, uh, as far as it goes. Um, and um, um, yes, thank you. So um, um, I wish the class um, on Saturday morning, this is precious time for you all and your families, I know. Um, so, you know, if I could do a Saturday morning class in an hour, then that's what we do. Um, but I felt like I needed a lot of specific instruction with this one. And so I did go back over it a couple of times, but the, the painting itself is a fast painting to do. So we don't have much more to do, to do with the, um, um, the whole process. And I am about ready to show you all how to use the black pen on your painting. And I'm going to be using a Sharpie, an ultra fine Sharpie. So this is a little teeny tiny um, point on there. Um, 
and I'm I'm afraid I'm I've got um, you know at my house when somebody doesn't really pay attention to what you're saying somebody says squirrel um, and I, with those two little birds outside my window I'm I'm having a little trouble keeping my um, so I guess I want to mention also um, a lot of teachers teach you to have a hair dryer so. Um, when you have a hair dryer, the paint does not dry in the in the length of time that it's designed to dry, and it also heats up the paper in such a way that the color is not as bright with with a hair dryer. If you you know if you uh, fan it in the air or fan it with your hand, that's all going to be a natural drying process. And I just don't go for the hair dryers, though I have had a painting myself that I needed to go faster on, and I have been known to get the hair dryer out and have it very, very low. But you just don't want to have it on any heat. I mean, they actually manufacture a dry, a little handheld dryer that's for watercolor painting, and it doesn't have any heat. It's just a very focused uh, fan but it kind of works like those ones that you can buy when you've got to be out in the heat. Um, you know, that's all it does. Um, so I think you all are ready for the black lines. Is there anybody that needs more time? Please speak up if you do. Um, I finished painting, but I just still have a few wet spots. So I'll just, I'll watch you and just wait for a little bit. Okay. Okay, that's that's wise thing to do. Also, I want to mention right now that if you are at uh, the Museum of Art in Houston or any Museum of Art any place, and you walk up and look real close, you know the kind of close that makes the the museum nervous uh, to a watercolor painting, you're gonna see pencil marks. Now those pencil marks are very, very important to those original watercolor paintings that are in the museums. Because if you are a good enough artist that your art is in a museum, people study your art. They wanna learn a lot about how you did it. And the, over the history of time, I mean, we actually have seen drawings that were done with a pencil or char or graphite or charcoal or something that were, were done by Rembrandt. Now those were important to the learning process for a lot of artists. And so I don't go in to erase my pencil lines very often. Now my studio class, we are doing it a lot of times right now, but in the beginning, it's really, really not a good idea to do that for one, is you might have an area in here that you don't know is a little bit wet. And when you go in with an eraser into this painting and you catch that little tiny area that's moist, you know, like a red or a dark blue, which were the last colors we painted, it's going to be a bad, you're gonna be sorry you did. Those pencil lines could be erased tomorrow if you want to. They never need to be erased. Those are the options. But right now, before you do the black lines, I would not recommend that you erase your painting. And just so you know, this is the best eraser made. Now, it doesn't have to be Pentel brand, but this high polymer eraser. And I like the white ones. I've actually not seen other colors of the high polymer eraser, but it's possible that they're out there. But I cut my, this big eraser in half. Sometimes I even cut it in smaller pieces than that. And um, that is why that, um, that's the eraser that I use when I do. And that's just so you know. And now then, because I want free arm movement, free hand movement, I'm gonna close my palette and I'm gonna move it away. And this is a soft uh, product that I've got here below me. So I'm getting this cardboard, which is a hard product. And so I can do a drawing on top of this. Now, the black lines may seem like an outline to you, but they're really not. It's a drawing on top of your painting. 
And the drawing process is as important to how pretty your painting is as the, as the painting is. And so I recommend that you don't look at this like you're outlining. Now, when I start doing it and with my trimmer, I really have some caution. But as I move along, I become a little more loose and certain of what I'm doing. And I recommend that if you have another piece of, of watercolor paper over here that you could maybe use as a practice sheet, I suggest that you try your brush or your black pen on the, on the paper because the paper has a tooth and it takes time to get accustomed to what that feels like. And you don't wanna push down too hard. If you push down too hard with a Sharpie, it's gonna bleed out a little bit. And, um, and it's pretty easy, believe it or not, to break those ends. But you can do a loose drawing on these and have it be real attractive. Now you all can see I have not outlined all of that. That's just an open loop that I've drawn on top of my painting. And kind of, it draws everything closer together. I mean, you may have thought, oh, those are so far apart. But that's when these little blue bonnet um, paint strokes can really um, shine when you do a black, your black lines with it because they are far enough apart that it, it looks like it's um, tied together when you do the black lines, but it's not too close. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the other one look like too. Kathleen, will we be putting a stem up through the flower? Um, thank you, Pat. And it's a little late for me to do that on this side. And But I'm going to show you all what that would have been like if we'd done it when I should have. So if you ever have um, the really small brush with from Pentel, then it's this is would be a good time to use it. But I'm not going to use the small brush. I'm going to use the medium because I assume that's what most of you have. And I'm going to come in here to my green and I'm going to get my tip of my brush and I'm going to put it over here. And now my brush is very wet. So I want to dry that brush. When I dried the brush, I got rid of my nice point. I need to be sure to be careful that when I put it down. So now then I loaded just the tip of my brush and I'm gonna come in here and very carefully do some broken lines in my, and now see my bristle was, my brush was very, very dry. And so I'm going to do some broken lines in this and have it be, more like a, um, so that's one of the things that I was going to do to show you how to make it look like more than one blue bonnet. So this I will treat as one and this I will treat as one. So that's the, just because I took those stem lines in different directions. If you've already put your black lines down like I have, it is fine to go back in, but I recommend that you be real careful to not put it on top of the black because it kind of makes it dull. And I'm, I just did a couple and that's fine. And I can come down here and do one underneath and here as well. So I'm gonna clean my brush and clean my palette again. And I'm gonna wait for that to dry before I go into my blue bonnet again with the black lines. So thank you, Pat. And it takes that you all to, to uh, keep me in line is, um,
And when my painting is drying, I take that opportunity to clean my palette. I put my caps back on my brushes and, um, you know, I want to make sure that I know if they need to be filled and my brushes are clean. And um, one of the nice things of painting with one of my palettes is it holds everything that you need to paint that painting except the brush and the paper towels. And I'm gonna, for the sake of you that aren't familiar with the palette and maybe not familiar with me, I have closed my desk and I have put my palette down on top of my lap. Now I can go sit anywhere and paint a painting with this palette. I can pick this palette up and I can go to the kitchen and I can be painting in less, in seconds, not minutes, in seconds. And I can put this palette and paper and brushes into a bag and I can go sit at the water gardens and paint. I don't have to be painting what is there. I can just enjoy the sound of all of the fountains and all the things that um, uh, are going on there. And I can just sit and paint, um, you know, I can paint daisies that are just petals and a center and a stem and some leaves. You all have learned how to, to paint all of those things um, right now in what you're doing. Um, and I'm still gonna give it another minute. Um, um, so that saying, um, Sandra just sent me, so she's, students are having to leave, um, you know, very quickly now. And um, I really think my stem, this was the last one I put down and it is dry. So now then I'm gonna come in here with my pen and I'm gonna do the same thing with my leaves. And again, this is not an outline. It's really kind of a wild loop. And now I'm gonna come down here with my stem. So um, that is, and you can always go back into your painting with a, with a stem, I mean, with the black mark to make your stem. Nothing keeps you from being able to do that. Um, and then that's how loose I hold my pen is um, it slid right out of my hands. So then you just keep on and um, you don't go back. You don't want a lot of lines. Nobody's gonna notice one little line one way or the other. If you've got an area that you don't wanna do the very same thing because it's so close, that's fine. There's, you, the, you're painting your painting now. Um, it's, um, you know, we, we have to make decisions based on what our individual painting looks like. It's not easy to do at this stage, but, um, and I wanna be careful to make this look like a separate um, blue bonnet. So I'm gonna do a few things. I'm gonna do my leaves now over here. And then that. And that, and I do get quiet when I'm doing the black pen. I really, really enjoy this process. My studio class, we've done uh, about approximately, uh, well, we have done 49 paintings together. We're getting ready to make a year of weeks. And uh, March is my anniversary month for the um, studio class. And that's one of the reasons why I started offering these um, free Saturdays is because when you've had students be with you a year, you're pretty much, um, you know, figuring there's some other people might want to join us. And um, 